as we get into the lives of the master, you're going to see how it works with Emilius a little bit. Uh, basically, he says that there are two forces in the universe, the positive, negative force. And depending on how much positive and how much negative, uh, what the frequency is, that's how everything is created. Whether it's music, mathematics, the whole universe is that positive and negative force. And depending on how we unbalance it, more positive, more negative, depending on what that frequency is, that's how you get into creation. But we can, we have the power, we have the ability to do that. See, your mind can affect the vibration of anything. And when we go back even further, when you go back into, when, when he talks about what we were, we were not bodies. You see, we were thought forms. We were, now it's like when you take ice, Ice is very, the vibration is very slow. So you get a solid. Uh, speed up the vibration, put some heat, and you get a liquid. So same, same matter, we're going from a solid to a liquid. Increase that frequency again, we go into steam. We go into air, which you can't see. So that's, on a very simplistic level, that's something that you can understand, even, even on, you know, solid, liquid, gas. We were beyond gas. That's where we were, beyond. That's how fast we were vibrating. Uh, we were beyond radioactive. The same way radioactivity goes through everything, we were even beyond that. So we could, we were everywhere. I mean, when you get into, when I do the workshop on quantum physics, as you get closer to the speed of light, what they say is if you hit that point, you could be everywhere at the same time in the universe. This is quantum physics. So if, now, if you think that someone like Christ, probably, not probably, that was it. That's as, as far as we can understand that you go. And when people said he was at five different places, oh, we saw him at Capernaum, and we saw him here, and we saw him here. Oh, well, how could you see him? He was over here with me, because he was in the same place. Because he had that ability to be at different places at the same time. Now that sounds crazy to us because our thinking is limited. We're, we're, like I said, there's eight dimensions. We're in the third dimension. He's on the eighth dimension. He's, he's done all of his trips. When you see Casey talk about when we've been on Saturn or we've been on Neptune or we've been on all these planets, and he gets into it in very detail. So we get into astrology. You know? So when you talk about what happens when we die, you know, it depends on what you did when you were alive and what lessons you have to learn, because we keep learning even in these other planets, so that when we come back, uh, there's different influences on it. So that he says, the stars incline, they don't compel. So in some of the readings you'll see, he, he tells the people, you could go to an astrologer, an astrologer will do a reading, and what the real information is 180 degrees from that. He says, your life will have nothing to do with your astrological sign. Even though he was very into astrology, and even though he would tell you in detail the different influences on you, sometimes it has nothing to do with your life. So, and then he said, the most important thing in your life is your will. The stars incline, they don't compel. Stars incline, they don't compel. And this is where, this is where the paradox comes in. So, otherwise, I'm just an automaton. In other words, it doesn't make a difference what I do. I have my fate, I have my destiny, and so if I kill somebody or if I don't kill somebody or whatever I do, I'm not responsible. But you are responsible. You see, this is where that will comes in. This is where that choice comes in, and this is where when Casey says, watch self go by. So this is when in the Gurdjieff work they tell you self-observation. So this is when you get into Tolly, he says, be aware of your body. Try and be there. Don't get lost. Don't be in that usual state that we're all in, which is called sleep. So when you hypnotize somebody, all you're doing is you're putting them into a deeper state of sleep. So if this world really gets to me, I'm going to have a drink. Or I'm going to have something to smoke. Or one of my nieces, 16 years old, she's already hooked on oxycodone and pot. 16 years, 17 years old. Can you imagine? Two, I mean, and screwing up her whole life. So, because 
And then you ask yourself, she's in pain. You see, when, you, when you're in there, there's different reasons why people get into drugs. Part of it is pain. Part of it is, or there's fear. You look at life. And, I mean, uh, if there's not an old, if you don't have some sort of guiding principle, if there's no philosophy, uh, then you get into The Godfather, one of my favorite movies. Mm -hmm. Nothing personal, strictly business, right? He'll kill his own brother. Kisses him before he sends what was that, Frodo? He sends him out on the boat. But, you know, I love you, man. You're my brother. As they, you know, twist the piano wire around his neck. Because uh, I want to get whatever works for me. So, in the Atlantic... Shut off. Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> as we were talking about sleep. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, what happened in Atlantis, which is they knew the laws of the universe, uh, and you had what was called the children of the law of one, and the people that followed Bilyeu. And they had the ability was to, using their mind, to create beings. In the period then, some hundred, some 98,000 years before the entry of Ram into India, there lived in this land of Atlantis one Emilius, who had first noted that the separations of those beings as inhabited the portion of the Earth's sphere are plain into male and female as separate entities or individuals. As to their forms in the physical sense, these were much rather of the nature of thought forms, or able to push out of themselves in that direction in which its development took shape in thought, much in the way and manner as the amoeba would in the waters of a stagnant bay. As these took form by the gratifying of their own desire, for that as builded or added to the material con conditions, they became hardened or set. With that color as partook of its surroundings. Okay. The sons of Bilyeu were of one group or those that sought more for the gratifying, the satisfying, the use of material things for self, without thought or consideration as to the sources of such, nor the hardships and the experiences of others. The other group, those who followed the law of one, had a standard. The sons of Bilyeu had no standards. In the process of projecting themselves into a variety of material bodies, the sons and daughters of men had in many cases taken on characteristics of plant and animal life. Some bodies had plant, proje plant projections, such as tree limbs or leaves. Others possessed animal legs or hooves, fish scales, furry skin, or the like. It is from these strange mixtures that are legends of satyrs, unicorns, mermaids. Okay. 